Welcome back everyone. Uh, what I want to do in this video is use both the trapezoidal rule and the midpoint rule to approximate the area under, well, to, to approximate the integral uh, from one to two of the function one over x dx. That is, we want to find the area under the curve one over x from one to two here. And with the trapezoid and midpoint rule, we're going to use five subdivisions. This is mostly just to uh, estimate, just to show you the meth method, and we're not necessarily worried about being too precise in practice, and one might need a much larger uh, number of steps to do that. So for the trapezoid rule, remember, if we're calculating T5, what we need to do is we need to calculate delta x over 2 times f of x naught plus 2 times f of x1. And I guess, yeah, and we, we keep on going here, 2 f of x2 plus 2 f of x3 plus 2 f of x4. And then finally, we get f of x5. So this is what we need to compute. So the first thing to consider are what are our x values here? So if we take our x-axis, we think of it like this right here. Uh, x0 is always going to be the lower bound. That is this number on the bottom side of the integral. So we're going to get a 1 right here. Uh, the upper bound is going to be 2, uh, which is our b value. Be aware that this is, this is what we mean here by x0. Here's what we mean by x5. So we have an x1 that we need to do, x2, x3, and x4. All right. Now to find more specific values here, we need to calculate our delta x. So recall that delta x, oops, delta x is supposed to be the last number minus the first number divided by how many subdivisions we want. So we get one fifth or 0 0.2 if you prefer a decimal here. And so what this tells us is that x1 will just be 0.2 plus 1, so 1.2, we get 1.4, 1.6, 1.8 for, for x4, and then 2 for x5 there. So those are going to be our x values there. And so putting these all in here, we're going to take 0.2 divided by 2. That's the first part. Don't forget to divide by 2. Uh, then we need to take the function in here, our function f of x, is the reciprocal function 1 over x, the function we're integrating. So we need to take here 1 over 1, that's of course a 1. We need to take 2 times 1 over 1.2 plus 2 times 1 over 1.4 plus 2 times 1 over 1.6 and then 2 times 1 over 1.8 and then make sure you take only 1 times uh, 1 over 2, which is there 1 half. And so notice here that none of these calculations are necessarily too difficult. I mean, we'd have to divide something like 1 over 1.6. Um, although it's doable, we can do it by hand. It can get a little bit tedious. Feel free to use a calculator in these calculations. Please don't be a hero. Uh, the arithmetic gets very tedious, uh, but we and we do want it to be accurate. So use a calculator to help you do 1, point, uh, 1 over 1.2 and 1 over 1.4, etc. right? Uh, multiply these things out, add them together. I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to kind of just summarize what this turns out to be. In the end, this calculation, uh, let me double check, will be approximately 0 0.695635, like so. So this is the estimate given when we put those numbers together. And so this is the estimate given to us from the trapezoidal rule. Now, if we switch things up a little bit and we switch it to the midpoint rule, I want to keep the trapezoid rule on the screen here. The midpoint rule is going to be very similar. Uh, we're going to take delta x and we have to multiply this by f of x1 bar plus f of x2 bar plus f of x3 bar plus f of x4 bar plus f of x5 bar, like so. Now, and the, the, the delta x is going to be identical that it was before. It's the exact same delta x. So we're going to get 1.2 there, excuse me. And so what are our xi bars? This is going to be the midpoint between them. So between x1, x1 and x0, 1 and 1.2, you're going to get 1.1. That's our first one there. Between 1.2 and 1.4, you get 1.3. Between 1.4 and 1.5, 1 1.6, you get 1.5. Between 1.6 and 1.8, you get 1.7. And then the last midpoint would be 
And so those are what we're going to do here. We're going to do 1 over 1.1, evaluate the function at 1.1, plus 1 over 1.3, plus 1 over 1.5, plus 1 over 1.7, and then finally, whoops, 1 over 1.9, like so. So the midpoint rule, although it takes a little bit harder to find the midpoints, it's a fairly clean calculation comparison. Again, you should calculate to help you with things like 1 over 1.1, 1, 1 over 1 1.3, etc. But when you add those together and times it by the points 2, uh, you are going to end up with approximately, this is our answer, 0 0.69190. Uh, whoops, 08, like so. So you can see that the two answers are fairly close. I mean, if you look at the first two decimal places, we both get a 0.69. Um, one round, this one wants to, of course, round up to 0.70. This one would round down to 0.69. So we're, we're about accurate to two decimal places right here. And that was that was easily done with only five subdivisions to our, to our uh, interval there. Now, the reason we chose this example is because this is actually... Uh, an integral that we know how to compute. Because uh, after all, the antiderivative of one over x is the natural log of x as we go from one to two. And so this is gonna be the natural log of two minus the natural log of one. But I wanna remind you that the natural log of one is actually just zero. So the true area under the curve is going to be the natural log of two. And if we were to consult a calculator, what uh, is our approximation for the square root of two? Uh, we're going to get point, whoops, 0 0.693147. And so this right here actually represents the area under the curve, while the other ones were estimates. And we calculate the natural log of 2 using a different technique than what we see right here. And so I want to compare how good were these techniques right here. So if we calculate the error, the error of the trapezoid rule, T5, we'll just denote this as E sub T for the most part. Um, the error of the trapezoid rule, this is gonna be the difference between the true value, which was the natural log of two, uh, minus, well, we'll back up. We'll write this as the integral from one to two of one over x dx. So we take the total value, the true value, minus T5, and we're gonna take their difference inside absolute values because we we might not know whether T5 is bigger or smaller. I mean, we can do it here. And if you take the value we had from before, uh, which was 0.695635, and you subtract that from the true value of the natural log of 2, you get, a, uh, you get approximately 0 0.002488. And so that's an S. Well, this, is, this measures how good our estimate was. Our estimate, I said it was accurate to do decimal places. It's almost accurate to 3, right? Uh, to be three decimal places accuracy, we want zero, zero, 001 right there. So we're pretty close there. Um, on the other hand, if we compare the midpoint rule, so the error, the error of M5, we'll call that EM for short. And so same basic idea, we're gonna take the absolute value of the integral, one to two of one over x dx, minus from it M5. And so from our estimate before, the midpoint rule calculated the error under the curve as 0 0.691908. Subtract that from the 0 0.693147 that the calculator gave us. And this would give us an error of 0 0.001239. And so we can see that in this situation, the midpoint rule did better than the estimate we got from the trapezoid rule. And in fact, it did about twice as, it was twice as good because our error is about half of what we had the error from the, from the trapezoid rule as well. And so we see in this, uh, we see in this example, one could calculate the, well, we, we can see here that one could calculate the, this error uh, because we know how to calculate the integral directly using the fundamental theorem of calculus. This might seem a little bit weird. It's like, well, why in the world would we estimate the error if we can actually calculate the true area? In practice, we generally won't be able to do that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. But to finish up this video, I do want to mention to us that, uh, well, I, I included the error right here to show you how comparatively they work here. And we're going to see that in, on average, the midpoint rule is actually twice as accurate as the trapezoid rule. But these calculations, as we saw, they involve a lot of arithmetic. 
It's not necessarily hard calculations, just long, tedious calculations where precision is desirable here. So feel free to use technology to help you with, with this. Use your, use your calculators, the scientific calculator is sufficient. But for the sake of your homework and quizzes, if you want to, feel free to use computer software to help you out here because no living creature should be expected to do these tedious calculations that you're going to see in the homework. Um, so I'm actually provided some links in this lecture video, see the description below, uh, to some websites that offer free online Riemann sum calculators. And the one I'm going to show you um, can be found at emathhelp.net. Um, this one I like and hate at the same time. And I like it because it shows you basically all the work that one needs to do. Uh, just the other hand, though, is this character, this this website, it's ad based and the ads are extremely annoying. You're not going to see them as in this video because my ad blockers are superb. Uh, but without them, you're going to be hit with very annoying ads all the time. So if we want to repeat this exercise, we could type in our function. So enter a function f, we type in one over x. Uh, we want to go from one to two and we want five subdivisions. So enter the data right there. Then you have to choose a type and we see the four types we've learned about, the left endpoints, the right endpoints, the midpoint rule and the trapezoid rule. If we hit the trapezoid rule, uh, we can then hit calculate to see the answer. If this box here, the show steps box is checked, um, that means that it'll show you all of the work necessary to do this one. And this can be a very useful thing for students as they're learning about these Riemann sum approximations. Now, I do apologize that on this screen, the font is a little bit small. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. Of course, with your on your web browser, you can enlarge this if it's too small for you. So this then proceeds to explain you know, what we're trying to calculate. We want to calculate the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x dx. We're going to do it using 5 rectangles using the trapezoid rule. It gives you a quick reminder of what the trapezoid rule is. It tells you the data you've done. And so now notice what we have to do. We have to do one times x f of x zero, which was one, two times f of x one, which was, we'll see is gonna be five over three, or it gives the decimal approximation. We have to do two over f of x two, two over two of f of x three, two of f of x four, and then one times f of x five, and has all those calculations. It adds those together at the very end, it spits out the final answer which you can see highlighted right here, 0.695634. Um, the answer I wrote earlier on the screen was just uh, what I rounded this estimate right here. We can get much more precise if we wanted to. And so that's how it works. It's pretty nice. And again, it shows all the steps. You can repeat the process uh, by unclicking the, the, uh, the show the steps part. And then when you calculate, it'll just give you the answer if you don't want all the extra fluff. But again, I, I, I do like how you can see the steps in case you want to uh, you know, to help you learn as a student, right? It's not just about the answer. We want to understand how we got that answer. And apparently I broke the computer. So we'll go back. It works It works pretty well. You can do it for the midpoint rule as well. But like I said, uh, apparently my internet just crashed. So we're not going to see the midpoint rule, but it'll give you an answer similar to what we saw before.